When you want to get best performance, you should get a dedicated server. But should you really? Let's compare beefy VPS from Server Factory to a couple of dedicated servers from Hetzner, all of which are more expensive than VPS, and you may be very surprised to see the results. So first let's see Geekbench 6. Single core results of VPS are on par with most expensive dedicated server, because they are both newest Ryzen 9s. Different models, but still newest Ryzen 9s. Older Ryzen 5 3600 that AX41 uses is way worse. In multi-core test, VPS relative performance drops, but I'm quite surprised, because this VPS has just 8 V-cores, and it is faster than AX44 with i5 13500 that has 14 cores and 20 threads. In random reads and writes, you can see that VPS ended up on the last place. And this is not surprising. This is where most VPSs completely fall apart in performance. VPS from Contabo has 11,000 IOPS, VPS from Hetzner has 70,000 IOPS. So, yeah, this result from Server Factor VPS is crazy good for VPS. But the dedicated server will be bad, because it is not sharing disks with another VPS on the same physical node. On the other hand, sequential storage speed on server factor VPS is amazing, and yeah, you can end up with VPS that has faster sequentials than the dedicated server. This is happening because most operations on the servers are not sequential, but rather very small random reads and writes. That means there's a lot of bandwidth for sequentials, but because there is always something, there can be some latency which causes drop in small read and write performance. Most VPSs are hosted on nodes that have RAID 10 SSD array, and because of that you can easily get great sequential performance on big files. MariaDB benchmark – good CPU, a lot of IOPS in random reads and writes equals amazing performance. Usually database performance is where most VPS suffer, but not VPS from server factory. Nginx benchmark – here we see worse relative performance of VPS compared to dedicated servers. I've benchmarked a lot of CPUs, and I think most important thing for Nginx is RAM and the CPU cache. Notice how well AX100 2 performs. It has Ryzen 9 7950 X3D with 128 MB of L3 cache in CPU. Ryzen 9 7950 X non 3D has half of that, and we have this CPU in VPS, but this half of L3 cache is shared among other VPSs, so we may have just 4, 8, or maybe 30 MB of L3 cache available. All depends on what other VPSs are doing and what CPU thinks it needs to remove from cache and what it needs to preload to cache. ZSTD decompression and compression time. Here CPU performance is always a limiting factor. Faster CPU equals better speed. ZSTD is used by many backup solutions, and it is important to have nice performance here if you have big site that you want to compress and backup of site. Redis. There is some controversy going on with their licensing right now, but it's still being used by many sites, so let's check it. Redis performance is amazing on all of these servers. X41 is clearly behind, but it's still 1.7 million requests per second, way more than most people need. SVT AV1 benchmark. AV1 is becoming more and more popular, and this Benchmark is really helpful if you want to upload any video to your site and have it transcoded to play nicely on every device. VPSs can have good results, but remember that while doing video encoding, your CPU will be used 100%. If you encode for a couple of hours straight, most VPS providers will throttle performance of your VPS, because you are impacting other VPSs at the same physical node. Server Factory doesn't have strict CPU policy. Policy, they are quite liberal, so you shouldn't have any problems. But if you need to transcode videos 24 7, then always go for the dedicated server. X44 has nice performance, and it also has hardware video encoder that can output 400 frames per second, but with a little lower quality per bitrate compared to SVT AV1 that we are testing right here. 
You can also use SVT Avion and hardware Avion encoding at the same time for other files or other resolutions. There's a lot of possibilities and I think that for video encoding, this one, the AX44, is the way to go. There is a full benchmark of this dedicated server on this channel. Now compilation time. I guess I need some other thing to compile. Do you guys have any recommendations? Cause Apache 2 is compiling very fast on all of them. Difference between VPS and AX100 too, that is couple times more expensive, it's just one second. Now WebP encode. Because you are not cool if you are not using WebP. Even though JPEG is better and I will publish my video proving that really soon. WebP encoding is single threaded, but for some reason Intel with very fast cores is not that fast. Last benchmark, PHP bench. Here Intel is very very fast and now we can make some conclusions. Should you get VPS even if you have budget for dedicated server? Yeah, as I showed you in this video, VPS can still give you way better value by giving you a chunk of way faster hardware. You cannot get Ryzen 9 dedicated server for 33 euros per month, but you can get VPS with that CPU for that price. AX100 2 is one of the cheapest dedicated servers with Ryzen 9 at 104 euros per month, but VPS still manages to catch up with the same performance in most tasks. I was very impressed with performance of this VPS. Server factory isn't well known, they are quite fresh to the game. But I'm using this exact VPS that I tested for two e-commerce websites from one month. And I migrated from a NetCap root server, which is VPS, but with dedicated vCores. Performance improvement was huge, support works very fast and VPS works reliably, so I can easily recommend this offer. That's all for today, have a nice day.